I haven't found many things in life as good as the song that I'm going to show you in today's video, but one thing I found that comes close is this app called Guitar Super System, my learning platform for guitar players, and don't take my word for it, let's check out the App Store. With hundreds of hours of content and guided learning paths for guitar players of all shapes and sizes, all skill levels, you can rest assured the Guitar Super System is a wonderful learning tool to aid you in your guitar journey. Check out the link in the description if you'd like to subscribe and thanks for your support. Now let's get into this video, it's a good one. So there's one song that I've always heard at weddings or parties or in stadiums that always gets people pumped. Depending on how much alcohol you have in you, or maybe more importantly how old you are, this song might mean more to you depending on the circumstances and that song is called Mr. Brightside by The Killers. Any wedding in the world. That song comes on, there's millennials in the house, they are going to go insane. It's just the way it is. I wanted to figure out exactly what makes this song so captivating. Every person, no matter your race, ethnicity, gender, whatever you are, this song just like activates something inside you. And it starts with this guitar part that Apparently, just not a lot of people can get right across the internet. The guitar part is tricky, to say the least, which you don't find often in pop songs of this magnitude. And I went through YouTube just to see if, you know, maybe I could just pick it up off the fly. Now, of course, I'm not putting down any of these educators. In fact, some of them actually say this is an easier way to play the song. But for me, I like to push myself when it comes to practice. I think that you get out what you put in, and it's worth a song like this to get perfectly right. I think that's part of the allure of the song. I think what we need to do is adjust the tuning of our guitar first. Down a half step. Seems uh, blue guitars are tuned down to E flat, and if you pick one up anywhere in the world, that should be true. But we are on the 17th fret, the chord shape that's kind of difficult. What I like to do with difficult chord shapes is play them in even more difficult positions. Uh, that way when I do move up to where the frets are closer together and I can kind of maneuver my fingers a little easier and have more flexibility, it'll be easier in general. So I'm going to take the same chord shape and move it to the seventh fret. <laughs> So now, uh, you know, practicing that for a little while, I, when I move back up here to the 17th fret, whoa, this feels so easy. That like just played itself right there. So now let's get into the actual motion of this chord progression, which is basically just taking the root note and moving it down a half step and moving it down a tritone. Top notes remain the same, the pattern remains the same, the only thing that changes are those three notes, and basically it goes like this. When I was going through each, I was hitting this open D to transition in between each shape. See how taking my hand off that major third, my pointer finger, and hitting the open D allows me to get my finger in position to go down to this root position while these fingers remain in the same spot. And this becomes a bar right here. And instead of hitting this note here, we're gonna do the same thing. And that is going to give us our final position. So that is really an exercise in itself. And I think that guitar part Although challenging and can be played multiple ways, when you play it the right way, it just sounds so much better than, you know, some fudged version. So when you get this down, it can really serve you well as a guitar warm up for eons of time. But let's go further into what makes this song so addictive. The next part of this goes B minor to A major to G major. And it's using the same pattern, same kind of intervals. Again, a 
very stretchy one, uh, if only for this last one. To set yourself up for success, we take this B minor shape, and you're gonna try and keep these two fingers here the whole time, the pinky and the index, and use your ring for the first root note. <laughs> have an open A. And then here's the stretch where we switch these two fingers. So that move there, that's the one you want to work out. We go from here to here. And then it just repeats the same pattern, everything. So those are the two main guitar parts that I think are worth noting. So I'm gonna record these parts now. Just the recording of it, there's just something special that makes you feel fuzzy inside when you hear this. And I think it's when the guitars really kick in and the layering starts to happen that you can really fully appreciate this tune. taken apart all the nuances of this song from a guitar playing perspective and I performed it. I can now solo out a couple different parts to let you know exactly what's happening to create this feeling in people. It's like, why do I love this? And I think it starts, we're talking about a universal song here, with the simplicity of the melody. The dude is singing literally one note for a lot of the first verse. Coming out of my cage and I've been doing just fine. Gotta, gotta be down cause I want it all. It started out with the kiss. Did it end up like this? It was only a kiss. It was only a kiss. Ba, 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 ba. It's just the root note. This simple melody, anyone can sing. If you can even sing a note, even if you can't sing a note, if you can just speak loudly, sort of on pitch, you will be able to participate in singing this song along with the band or wherever you are. And when you pair that with lyrics like these, which this isn't necessarily a songwriting deep dive, but these lyrics are very memorable and effective and they paint a picture, which is what great lyrics do. And sometimes it can be as simple as a story like these. I don't think there's necessarily any like crazy John Mayer analogies that it's like, oh, I was thinking that, but I never thought to say it like that. It's not really that type of lyric, but the way that these lyrics just hit, you know, the certain plosives on the certain memorable words that you don't necessarily utter often in real life, it's just super memorable and catchy and easy. That is what it comes down to, easy. And it also lays out for the guitar parts that we went over in such detail earlier in the video. It really allows those parts to bloom and flourish and be everything they can be, the best potential of those riffs. They're not covered up by anything because the melody is simply supporting them, which is 
interesting because in most pop music the melody is the king and everything else is supposed to support that but this is really kind of backwards in that way and then of course when we go to the pre-chorus and we have those more luscious full chords he does start to adjust the melody but those adjustments are actually very slight if you hear just with the guitars and vocals and it's all in my head but she's touching his chest now he takes off her dress now So as you hear there, there are a couple different notes, we're not just sticking to the root, but it's the same idea of very simple intervals and he really is singing the same interval over and over again for most of these parts. So it's such good continuity and such good songwriting. Of course, when you hear this part, you know what's coming next. Sorry, I'm, I'm like staring at you as I sing to you, <laughs> kind of a weird thing. But by taking away the drums, you can really hear what all these parts are doing to support the melody, or like I said, vice versa. The melody kind of goes a little bit more into the traditional pop realm, but we're still sticking to straight diatonic intervals. Nothing jazzy happening here, straight up pop. Just kidding. It's actually kind of a jazzy melody, because if you think about it, if we look at D flat here, this is the melody that he's singing. That is a major seventh that goes up to the root. We come up here to the G flat. He's still playing that same melody, which becomes, that is a sharp four, flat five, up to the five. Very jazzy. And then we come down here to the B flat. And this is going to be a two, to minor third. So we haven't actually hit a normal pop note like to start these melodies off. They're always these jazzy approach notes and then coming down to the A flat. That one actually feels more normal compared to the other three because this is a major third to a sus four. Those melodic choices right there are so adverse to the original melodic choices which were literally no melodic choice. Just like starting with the root note in the verse and then slowly sprinkling in notes that are diatonic but not in a way that are jazzy like these and then finally the chorus is the jazziest part of the song. But it all crescendos up to that point to cater to the listener. If you're not used to a major seventh in your pop melodies, that's okay because we're not gonna give it to you right in the beginning of the song, we're gonna wait until you have been properly root noted. And I don't know if you ever knew the lyrics to this chorus, I didn't. For example, everybody knows jealousy, but after that, turning saints into the sea, I never knew that part. I don't really know what it means. I guess like turning good people into a bad thing, maybe that's it, but the point is, we're talking about what makes this song so iconic and so universal. It's these crescendos, jealousy, price I pay, like these rhythmic devices in the melody that allow you to catch on. The ultimate example of this is like that Bare Naked Ladies song where it's like flying off the backswing. Like, I don't know what happens before flying off the backswing, but I know that part. And that's what makes songs like these so awesome. So if you're ever at a wedding and this song comes on, you can, instead of dancing and screaming at the top of your lungs, you can whisper to your date, hey, you wanna know why you really like this song? And then you can like play this video for them while everyone's dancing around you. Uh, don't do that. Thanks a lot for watching. Check out Guitar Super System if you're interested. I really do appreciate your support. Leave a review in the App Store if you're so inclined. And I'll see you in the next video. But until then, keep shredding.